the child may pick up something, some values from the parents. The parents are there to support, to guide, but not to intervene and to kill his, you know, dying hard passion or the what he wants to become. And until unless the society changes, it is very difficult for the present academic or education system to grow, especially in India. If we have doubts, that is a question mark, doubts, clear it before it kills you. Hello everyone, I'm your host Seema and I welcome you all to another insightful session on Great Principles. Parents, parents have a special place in our life, in the life of the children, in the life of a child till the age he becomes, he dies, till that time because you know in every walk of our life, our parents inspire us, influences us in every manner possible. We see what they do and we follow the same. This is the influence of the parents on us. Right from the moment the child is born with the twinkle in his eyes till the time, till the time he knows the world, parents are there shaping the behavior, the attitude and the beliefs of the kids. So in today's episodes, we will be learning about how parents can be a great positive influencer and not an intervener. Well, yes, I'm telling, talking about intervener because today parenting is also being changed. We all are having so many chores to handle and we all are running behind those. So our today's very devoted educator, Dr. Jacob Das, he is the principal of Veena Devi Darda School, Yevatmal. He'll be discussing with us how we parents can be a great positive influencer. So let's hear it from him. Welcome to Great Principles, sir. We are very honored to have you with us. Thank you, Seema. And namaste to all the viewers and all the educationists and the parents especially. Uh, well, the topic uh, is what I have with me today for the time being is parents as positive influencer. We are talking a lot about influencers today. We find the social media, you know, filled up, blowing up with influencers. Yes, I agree. So what I want to discuss today is that parents should play a role of a very positive influencer rather than as an intervener. Mostly we find that the parents, the dreams, the dreams are, they put them on their children. Now, my question is, why do you put them on their children? Why do you not become an engineer? That's why you want to become an engineer. Or you want to become a doctor. Or you want to become something else. So this is not fair. The child has his own life. The child has his own life. As a parent, we should influence them, but in a positive way. अगर मैं इसको एक एग्जांपल के तौर पे लूँ, इफ आई टेक अ एग्जांपल, हम लोग नॉर्मली वी सी दैट द चाइल्ड हैज अ रोल मॉडल, गांधीजी, ओके स्वामी विवेकानंद एंड सो मेनी, नाउ द लेटेस्ट इवन हीरोज एंड हीरोइन्स आर द रोल मॉडल्स ऑफ किड्स, अपार्ट फ्रॉम द लीडर्स हु हैव सैक्रिफाइस्ड � आप उस दिन समझ पाएंगे अगर जिस दिन आपका बच्चा बोलता है जो मैं मेरे मम्मी जैसा बनना चाहता हूं मैं मेरा पापा जैसा बनना चाहता हूं तो दैट डी द पेरेंट शुड फील प्राउड दैट यस दिस इज माय चाइल्ड एंड आई डोंट मीन व्हेन आई एम सेइंग दैट आई वांट टू बिकम लाइक अ माय पेरेंट माय फादर माय मदर और माय दादा दादू इज आई डोंट वांट टू से दैट अबाउट द प्रोफेशन बट द चाइल्ड मे पिक अप समथिंग सम वैल्यूज फ्रॉम द पेरेंट्स the girl child may wish that how my mother walks, how my mother cooks, ye utha sakte hai se. The child also, the male child can think, yes, my father never tells a lie. So why can't he pick up this? Why can't they find the heroes in their parents? So I think there is a gap. School is one of the platforms where we try to inculcate and imbibe good qualities for human beings. But I think in a gap of four hours, five hours, or in a day, the school is really handicapped, though we are bound to give these kinds of qualities. But at the end of the day, the parents will come. What have you studied for my child? How many marks have you got for my child? Whether we say anything, there are only point some percent of parents who are not actually focusing on marks. But I am also saying that the parents are forgetting about the values. So if I really want, most of the parents I have been dealing for almost 25 years, that the parents are in forcing the children to do what they like, not what the kids want. I have live examples in my life. Some of them are very close to my family. 
the both the parents i won't name here both the parents are uh, engineers and they are doctors and they wanted the child to become engineer and a doctor what did the child do she passed both engineering and medical she did not take admission and then she went on for law the whole family they were behind her that why you want to do law and today she is one of the best advocates in a very short span in vidarbha itself i have another student also who did his iit from kharagpur completed now he is pursuing his uh, arts painting he was a die hard of that he gave the certificate to the parents he comes from a business community and now he is following his dream his passions so my only point to the parents is please don't force your child to do what you want check out what he is good at and the schools at the same time have a very important role to play to groom the child what he is good at and that is exactly what i am doing with this my new school this veena devi dadda school is just two years it is my dream project so this is uh, in a rural area i wish everybody and those who can come and they can visit this school i have a different concept for this school i want that the child what he loves to do he should be allowed to do in the school and there are certain things which we also want that he should love to learn so that is where we are trying to give him the platform we are trying to mentor him but in between all this still i am finding the parents are the biggest you know road blockage for the student for the child to grow as per his own uh, beliefs his thoughts his fancies of course the parents are there to support to guide but not to intervene and to kill his you know dying hard passion or the what he wants to become there are many more students you will find in out of my 25 years i have found some students they have left iit they have left left engineering and they have joined ar rahman studios they have joined a very good uh, you know, this thing uh, the dramatic schools they have joined and i remember those parents they used to come and they used to grudge and they used to always complain and say aap log padhate nahi ho this is what i have faced i am talking about the ground level i also have few students who have played national level and international level soccer and for me that child he was not at all good but then we did something not very magical but i just tried and i found that the boy is really doing great wonders he is playing for international soccer so don't you think all the parents that this is something great something very important so this is what i feel the parents should come up and try to understand the kids what is there what is his wish uska what what he has is in his mind is in his heart sometimes they give up parents ko retaliate nahi karna i am not saying the child should retaliate the parent but the parent should give some kind of ground where they can talk to the child bhai beta aapko kya acha lagta hai aapko dancing karna hai acha theek hai karo we should be a supportive parent not a you know hitler type of parent yahi karna hai we should not give and that is the place when we do we kill the child's you know imaginations his dreams his energies and this is something what we are doing very wrong and added to this there is another small point which i would like to say that the rat race wo baju wala mishra ji ka beta jo kar raha hai aap kyun nahi karte ho uski beti dekho aise aise kar rahe hain aap kya kab karoge supposing the child asks पापा उसके पापा तो फ्लाइट या एयर कमांडेंट है आप क्यों नहीं बने सो वे यू गो बट हमारे बच्चों और हमारे भारत के संस्कार ऐसे हैं जो हमारे बच्चे पलट के जवाब नहीं कर, या प्रश्न नहीं करते हैं तो दिस इज समथिंग गुड एंड वी शुड नॉट टेक एडवांटेज एज पेरेंट्स बच्चे हमारे हैं डेफिनेटली बट वी डोंट हैव द राइट ऑन देम वॉट दे शुड डिसाइड यस वी शुड बी अ फेसिलिटेटर वी शुड बी अ मेंटर and we should tell them ye dekho ye din hai ye raat hai and tell them din mein kya fayda hai raat mein kya fayda hai so this i think uh, we should change the mindset of the parent right from the metropolitan cities to the rural areas also aaj gaon gaon mein bhi schools hai bacche hain wahan pe bhi bas parents wahi sochte hai mera bachcha school gaya wo bas doctor ban jayega engineer ban jayega but if you really see how many doctors and how many engineers today we are struggling for even pg doctors yeah so 
सो दिस इज मैंने एक विड़म्बना है हमारे सोसाइटी में एंड सोसाइटी चेंजेस इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर द प्रेजेंट एकेडमिक और एजुकेशन सिस्टम टू ग्रो स्पेशली इन इंडिया absolutely yes. an eye opening talk sir i completely yes. agree with you that we parents put the burden of our unfulfilled dreams onto our children forgetting yes. that that individual is different her bachcha alag hai uske sapne alag hai uska talent alag hai so yes. sir yes. you yes. rightly mentioned that all you need to do is to recognize where the interest lies of your child and hone that skill uske upar yes. focus kariye and see how beautifully the child blooms and yeah. another important aspect which sir brought was mishra ji ka child definitely mishra ji ka beta this is the biggest problem the problem of comparison so please stop comparing and yeah. another thing which i would like to mention and add on here sir is please that, you know, our parents have have an obsession with marks so you know that is why the children are not able to pursue what they want to to you know just understand learn more in the area where their interest lie to hone that talent more to hone that skill more because they have the burden of performing at examination to learn and get marks to please their parents and when they do this gradually they lose the interest in the talent which they had and you know that can never be grown further so this is another thing which we as parents need to look forward to yes sir it was uh, do you know really much needed talk today so jacob Thank sir you. before signing off let me understand from you a little more about your journey of 25 years in education how it all started and what keeps you going in here fine uh see few of the years after like i am basically from kolkata i have graduated from sinzevius college kolkata and uh, after doing my graduation or when i was doing also i was uh, trying to you know help students to study of course for monetary reasons in calcutta there is a different system but then i moved down to uh, first of all i moved on to patna as a uh, computer in charge for a school which had the school learning projects that was the first project which i, I was taking care of north bihar and uh, nepal zone as a territory in charge and after that i don't know i had got an opportunity of course in vardha that is lloyd steels industries which is now actually runs bhavans vardha lloyds uh, vidyaniketan so i am the founder member of that school so co i mean luckily i could have a very good relation with the chief executive officer i still remember him mr kanodia mb kanodia and for various reasons i don't know we had uh, developed a very good rapport and uh, the school was a school for all the managers dgms and big shots for the steel factory over there it was in the colony itself so i had joined that school in 1995 and i was the founder member of that school and uh, one day my principal uh, was there he was just 23 years uh, old i mean uh, he had joined before me and just within 2 3 months there was a problem of teaching in social studies though i was selected for computers as it but then uh, we were having a stroll in the evening the principal said i still remember very clearly he asked uh, jacob uh, can you teach uh, social studies i said what what's the big deal about teaching social studies and frankly i am admitting i never liked social studies so I, but i thought that what was there to teach in social studies what is there nothing is there i said okay fine i don't know maybe i wanted to impress him honestly so i said okay next day i went i took the book i saw i said okay fine the book has two three pages and every lesson gets over and all the students i mean the children in that class were belonging to dgm agm and what not big shots so i started my teaching in a different manner in a very different manner not uh, mugging up the questions at the end of the lesson so i taught i tried to teach them every line every word and try to visualize them with some you know stories and something and it just happened i don't know i was never prepared also so but i found myself i discovered myself oh i can teach well so that was the journey which started in 1995 apart from being uh, the it teacher so then luckily i found that one fine uh, like month meeting was there the parents were all against and my principal was there and he was looking at me to respond to the parents queries i told the parents since the school was inside the colony i said you just call up any of your child ask them to bring any of their social studies book 
and I will tell you what I have completed and anybody sitting in this audience can ask any questions from them. I bet out of 10 questions, they will answer six questions. I still remember. And it really happened. They answered almost nine answers out of 10 questions. And that was my way. It is not that the end of the lesson, the exercises, you know the questions, you know the answers. So that was a big actually changeover journey for me. Uh, actually, before that also I was teaching in some small schools, giving to home tuitions and all. But that is not actually the profession. But in 1995 when I came here, so I started, uh, that was a sea change in my life, in my teaching career as well. Apart from just teaching computers as IT in charge, I was also teaching the social studies and sometimes English. And I said that till 10, and today also I tell my teachers, till 10 standard, you should be able to engage your classes for two hours without even getting, uh, I mean, preparing for yourself. Apart from, you know, some difficult subjects, language, Sanskrit and all. But whatever subjects you are there, you should be readily available and you should have the contents to teach the students and engage them for two hours. So basically 1995 was my changeover, a big changeover, a sea changeover in my career. And after that, there was no looking back. And then uh, 2007, I left Bhavans, Vardha, which I was a founder member. And within a short span, uh, I am sure that you also know that Bhavan still date is one of the most craving schools in Vardha, though I know what is the reality. And then after that, I came and joined Yavatmal Public School, which was a state board school. I converted that into CBSC. And again, it was no looking back in just a span of three to four years. It, it was the talk of the town. And in 2015, I started, I thought to move out by management said that, what do you want? I said, I want another school. Because here everything is, uh, you know, saturated and I have no scope. So this was a dream school. So he said, what type of school you want? So I said, a school with no bags, no, no tuitions. Students should not go for tuitions. If they're going for tuitions, no admission for them. And everything should be done here in the school. And that is what this Veena Devi Dada school is here. In pandemic, we had opened and today we are affiliated CBSC school. And we are fully ready to take on anything. So that's a small journey of my life. So with your efforts, I'm sure that your dream school will flourish because, yeah. you know, this is what we all want. And even the government is talking about the national yeah. curriculum framework is already out and it's being said that till the age of six, we don't have any books now. Books. So, yeah. you know, already everyone is working in the similar directions and I'm sure with educators like you, things will change. Yes, I sir. want to add one more thing. You know, uh, recently, if you have gone through where well, this idea of no books came from where the Maharashtra government had a few years ago, they had given class one, itne kg books, class two, itne kg books. So they had, I thought that where did they do this research? Kisne bol diya jo class one ka bachcha ko do kilo ka hi kitab uthana hai. So I said, isko pura khatam karne ke liye. I said, kitab uthana hi nahi hai, zarurat kya hai? They should study in home, go home, enjoy and school may be khelne ke liye diya jata hai, this school. So they should, what, what is there? What else should be there? If the teacher is teaching properly, they don't need to go home and study and neither they should go for tuition classes. A parents sleep his their tuition classes mein, ja bhai, ghar mein nahi padta hai, to do ghanta wahan cha chale ya. Ghar mein shanti rahe ga. This is the fact. And tuition is another school. It is a torture to the child. It is a torture. So from that, I, I got the idea, bhai, ye Maharashtra government kal ja ke weighing machine leke aayengi, kitna book, kitna version hai. So I said, isko na rahega baas, na bajegi baasri. To mein bola, chalo, isko pura hata do. No books. Students are coming without books, bagless. And I both strictly bola, if your child, if you're sending any tuitions to your child, your child name should be struck off. And you should please uh, excuse us. Haak jod ke mein unko namaste bol leta. Uh, you know, we should have a crave for learning. And as you said in the beginning, you know, uh, till our death, that is from cradle to our grave, we should have a grave for learning. And especially I have, uh, you know, five E's, which is also my mission of the school. That is, we should explore. That is, we should allow our students to explore the things. Okay. Then once they explore, we find out that they are exper uh, experiencing the same things. This is not a new philosophy, but this is what I have tried to assemble it together. So once they experience, so they become automatically they are educated. So you don't have to have another track of educating, you know, from morning 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. to 3, 3 o'clock. So not that way. Okay. So that is another thing. So once you explore, they get experience. Once they get experience, they are 
automatically educated, half knowledge, full knowledge, whatever. And once they are educated, I think education gives empowerment. So once you get the empowerment, now what is there, we should teach to the students. So once you are empowered, when we are raja or big, the most important thing is to bring empathy. Empathy. We should have empathy. So normally when you are too powerful, we forget about this empathy. So empathy is about the values which I am talking. And if we go in the right way, with the right environment, with the right school, and I think this is a great learning, like this is a you know platform of great principles. So I'm sure that this would be a great learning for everybody. And that is where everybody should crave for a learning. And last point is, if you have doubts, that is a question mark, doubts, clear it before it kills you. That should be the, you know, uh, we should give it to every student. This is all what I wanted to add. Absolutely, Thank sir. You. So the wonderful five E's you have explained here, yeah. And uh, the philosophy of these five E's is the core of any successful educational institute. So, you know, the tutoring actually happens in schools very well. And mm -hmm. if the child pays attention, uh, he is already done. He has learned what he's supposed to in a day. And you mm -hmm. very rightly said, sir, after going home, it should be, you know, he's learning many other things. He's spending time with families. He's playing games with friends moving around, acquiring different skills. So that needs to be focused. Otherwise, what happens is after coming from school, child is back to back tuitions and the day ends. Then he just finishes a little bit of homework and finish. There is no scope of learning anything else. So very right. wonderful philosophy, sir. I wish you mm -hmm. luck in all your endeavors and I'm sure success is bound to follow because you're so passionate about it. I can see yeah. that. So, sir, Thank wishing you luck. And on this note, we would end our today's session. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time with us. I truly appreciate it. Thank you and namaste to all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.